So hello everyone. I I'm a student ambassador here with Adrian, who um we're a part of the first generation club. Um if Adrian's there. Can you see? I cannot see. Uh you wanna introduce yourself, Adrian? Yeah, hi, I'm Adrian. I'm a student ambassador. I help run clubs and specifically I help run the first generation club here with Fatima and we help to put on great workshops here like this one hosted by Chris Miller. Uh, actually, Chris, would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us more about the presentation. Sure, sounds good. Thank you so much, Fatima and Adrian. I'll go ahead and uh, get started, talk about myself. There I am, Chris Miller. I am the WSU Global Campus Career Advisor. I'm here for any of your career development needs. So if you have any questions, you can send me an email at cmiller66 at wsu.edu at any time just to kind of get the process rolling. Um, so yeah, tonight talking about um, internship search strategies. I guess uh, three three things I wanted to say is one, if you have any questions, um, if you can put those in the chat box, that'd be great. And I will try to break at certain times and go check it out to make sure, see if I missed anything. Um, second, I'm going to use the term internship search strategies and job search strategies kind of interchangeably uh, because for the most part, <clears throat> it's the same. It's the so strategies will be somewhat the same. There's a little less on the internship search side of things than a job search sometimes, but not all the time. So just to let you know, I might be, I might accidentally say job search, but I, I mean internship search. It's essentially, I'm going to be essentially using them in the same way. Um, and then the third thing I wanted to say, what was it? Oh, I know. Um, later on in this presentation, I'm just going to ask, you know, if, if you'd like to, just to kind of highlight something about internship and job searching. If you think about the last, I don't know, over the last 10 years, any kind of resume building experience, so any job you've worked, internship you've had, or any volunteer experience, anything you've done <clears throat> for work, even if it's like just within your family or um, in the community, whatever it may be, how did you go about obtaining that position? And so I'm just going to kind of break it into three larger groups. So did you apply to an open position? So did you see a help wanted sign? If it was 10 years ago, did you see a uh, something in the, uh, in the, in the newspaper, a help wanted ad um, Craigslist, like a, a website that's, that's, you've just found this open posting and applied to it and got a position that way, whatever it was, or was it through networking? Was it through someone you knew who got you a job an internship some volunteer work, whatever it is. So that open posting, um, networking, and then other, because there are other job and internship search strategies too that I'll talk about. But so just think about that. And I'll ask a little bit later on if you can throw those in the chat box, just to kind of see if if your experience, our collective experience kind of matches up, um, you know, the experiences generally of others, statistically speaking. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and get started. Now I'm going to turn my video off because I'm going to have some lagging for sure um, on my end. So um, when I start these presentations, I kind of just do this quick look at the career development process in general. Um, the, I shouldn't say the career development process, a career development process um, that a lot of people go through. And, um, you know, tonight talking about internship searching, we're really in the orange section of taking action, you know, looking to gain experience. Um, but in order to do that effectively, it's important to know yourself, know your skills, what's important to you. You know, with an internship, you could be doing it to explore options. So in that green section too, um, and then using an internship to kind of get to the next level to get a job. So getting focused, making decisions, setting goals, we could be in the blue section too. So we really could be all over this this little um, career development process circle. And this isn't something that anyone does in a given order, do this, do yellow, then green, then blue, then orange. It just, it could be, it depends where you're at, you know, in your in your career development, where, where are you starting from? Where are you, where are you trying to go next? So um, that's just a nice little snapshot, I think. Um, so what I'm gonna talk about first is kind of what employers say they want. And this, these are responses from employers that 
came to WSU to hire internships and jobs. Um, so they're looking to hire WSU students. This is what they're saying they want. Now I'm going to talk about what you bring to the table as uh, as a global campus student, as an online student. Um, and, and then I'm going to talk about some effective internship search strategies and kind of share some resources with you too, just to give you an overview of kind of where, where we're going here. Um, so employers say they want genuine interest. What does that mean? You need to be truly interested in the company, what it does, and the internship for which you're applying. Um, if you will not be spending most of your time in a position without it being something of genuine interest, and it's not going to be a good fit for you nor the company. Um, interpersonal skills, so that you work well with others and maintain a good relationship with your coworkers and supervisor, that you listen uh, to those around you, taking the time to comprehend, comprehend, excuse me, fully what it is what it said and assimilate requests or instruction to, into your approach to tasks or projects, and to be confident, caring, and assertive. Um, they also identify competence. Um, your supervisor is going to be looking for an intern who can make decisions, clearly state what they believe are the appropriate pathways or solutions. Uh, they want people who have the requisite skills and have the ability to learn quickly. Um, competence, what they meant by that is creating positive first impression, following through, admitting and learning from mistakes and accepting suggestions for improvement um, and showing leadership potential. Uh, dependability. Employers want employees who are organized and manage their time well, so prompt that are prompt in getting reports or assignments done, arriving on time for meetings and appointments, showing examples of timely project management. Uh, compatibility, employers want employees who work well with others, um, participate in social activities so they can get to know you better, maintain discretion um, in the amount of socializing done on work time, and value your role as an effective team player. Uh, initiative employers uh, want interns who are self-motivated, take extra courses, train outside of work on your own time, master technology, keep skills current, um, make suggestions, working hard when there are deadlines, volunteering for committees or projects to become noticed and recognized. Also communication skills. They obviously want interns um, who have good communication skills, both written and verbal. Um, Clarity in many cases and brevity are strong indicators of clear business communications. Uh, customer focus, when that's relevant for the company and the internship, uh, they want employers build their success on their interactions with customers. It's critical that you understand the need for excellent customer focus skills. And then they also identify commitment. When you use your strengths, your natural talents, you're doing your best work, it'll provide satisfaction. And when you use your strengths with purpose, you connect more strongly with your work and you take responsibility for developing work satisfaction. So that's what they identified, kind of how they spelled out what they were looking for in future interns and employees. Um, they also identified, this is externally, this isn't just ones, um, not just employers hiring specific, specifically at WSU, uh, but employers also say they want independent learning skills, so the ability to learn and recognize opportunities to learn, research skills, the ability to find information and ideas, the ability to critically distinguish between various sources of ideas, uh, writing and reading skills, so the ability to structure thoughts coherently and express yourself in ways that are appropriate to the occasion. Um, to the ability to understand language and systems of meaning, uh, critical thinking, the ability to tell better ideas from worse, the ability to test ideas by subjecting them to relevant criteria, uh, adaptability, the ability to apply knowledge and skills to a wide variety of contexts, time and resource management, the ability to work under pressure and maximize resources uh, to produce a desired outcome. Electricity is like literacy for print. It's the ability to read, navigate, and create the digital environment. Um, problem solving is the ability to understand and express a problem that needs to be solved and the knowledge of various methods of analysis that might be relevant to the problem. Um, interdisciplinary, the ability to work at the borders of traditional forms of knowledge using the resources from more than one area to help define uh, a problem or ask a question and suggest approaches to addressing those. Uh, global understanding and cultural sensitivity, the ability to appreciate cultures and traditions outside of um, one's own, 
historical understanding, the ability to see how and why things came to be as they, they are and how they might be different. And then uh, perspective, the ability to understand how other people or groups think and to value the difference. Um, so what does online student success depend on? Depends on a lot of different factors. And these are the things that you can market to employers. So being self-motivated, teamwork, communication, collaboration, exposure to technology, um, understanding and using data, critical thinking, complexity and flexibility, interpersonal skills. So when they say that, they mean accepting feedback, conflict resolution, social awareness, self-awareness, self-management, and etiquette. That's definitely a big part of the online experience. Um, they, you bring interests that cut across departmental boundaries, multidisciplinary skills, adaptability, analytical skills, creativity, curiosity, communication, cultural awareness, imagination, a, sen a sense of context. Familiarity with history, reading and listening comprehension, organizational ability, ability to work independently and in teams, and of course, time management. That's a huge deal for the online experience, as you well know. Um, I should jump back in the chat box just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, cool. Um, so like I said before, if you can think about the last 10 years, how many jobs, internships, whatever, something that you could use for, you know, resume, resume content. How did you find those opportunities? Was it through open listing? Was it through someone you knew or was it through some other method? I'll go ahead and throw mine in the chat too. Um, and then just to kind of get an idea. Okay, so we're about we're about there. We're about right where it usually is. We have six, seven through networking and six through open listings. No, five through open listings, excuse me. Seven to five, three. Oh, there we got more. So again, still leaning toward networking over open listings. Um and that's, I mean, generally it's more through networking than open listings, but still we're showing in this group here, and this is a very small sample size, obviously, but that networking is still the more, the most effective job search strategy, internship search strategy in general. Um, and so as you're thinking about where you might want to um, pursue an internship, it's important to remember if you have a target, a job target, a company target, a location target, um, if you want to work at target, no, I'm just kidding. I just kept saying target, uh, that you can try to network directly with the company, regardless of whether or not they have internships open, whether even they have an internship program, whether they have someone who manages interns. Um, that is a strategy that a, a lot of students do. They just connect with uh, people at departments or with companies directly to try to essentially create their own internship when one doesn't already exist. So not through open listings, but through networking. Um, so what are some effective search strategies? Um, introducing yourself in person when possible. Um, this was not possible for a few years and now in many instances, it is definitely possible. So when you have that opportunity to do that, Job search support groups. Um, these can be done in different ways. So like work source, uh, so state and federal employment offices often will have um, a job search support group, local libraries, sometimes churches, uh, meetup.com, chambers of commerce. Um, these are places where people are able to find job and internship search support groups. Um, activating your network. So just letting people that you already know letting them know that you're looking for work, internship, job, what, whatever it may be. Um, private employment agencies and search firms, that's more on the job side. Gig economy, more on the job side. But in terms of internships, I'm going to share a, res uh, a resource with you a little bit later on that is kind of gig economy style. 
um, state and federal employment offices, like I said before, for those job search support groups, but also just generally um, their resources there um, are helpful. Again, mostly on the job search side, but still these are effective search strategies for both internships and jobs. Um, so if you look at all the search strategies that, that people utilize, so looking for open listings on the internet, kind of has a four to 10% success rate in general. So if you are pursuing something in IT, engineering, finance, and healthcare, you likely will have a better shot of finding an opportunity um, compared to others, but closer to that 10% range. Uh, posting or mailing out resumes, lower 7%. Private employment agency search firms, again, like I said, that's more on the job side of thing. There's a range of like five to 28%. Um, and asking for job leaves networking. So that's a 33%. And then showing up and introducing yourself that top one there around a 47% success rate. Um, and so what does all this, what does all this mean? All these numbers, all this, all these stats here. That basically what it means is there are many ways to search for opportunities. Some are more popular than others. So if you're spending all your time looking for open internship listings online and it's not working for you, you want to think about how you're spending your time and maybe devote some more time to some other methods. Um, some are more effective than others. It's uh, an art, not a science. There are no always wrong or right ways to search for work experiences. Um, it always depends on some amount of luck and combinations of different methods will produce more successful results. Right, and Amaris is hitting it on the head there in the chat box. Standing out, competitive differentiation. So what do I mean by, well, I guess that's what I mean. I mean, how do you stand out from, from the competition when you're in a pool um, applying to an internship? What are you doing to help uh, separate yourself from the others to have a better shot of getting that internship offer? So doing the things that other internship seekers are not doing. Are you tailoring your resume for that internship. Um, with an internship resume, you're likely gonna wanna have a professional summary section at the top that kind of highlights all your most relevant skills and experiences that really speak to that internship posting. Do you have that? Um, are you hitting the keywords from the internship posting? Are you um, quantifying your experience with data, providing numbers, percentages, number ranges to help you um, with that internship application you know, you might not be able to do all of those things because it's an internship and it's a way to try to gain work experience um, in order to transition into something. But still, are you trying to highlight those transferable things that you've done before that you could use in that internship or in that career area going forward? Are you networking? Are you coping with how it's going? Do you, are you maintaining a positive attitude? Um, so persistence is a key element for a successful internship search. And even the most optimistic people can find it difficult to remain committed to spending the time that it takes and the energy. So for every positive response, there, there will be a number of negative, uh, a number of negative responses. And so it's important that to remember that each no brings you closer to a yes and, and finding ways to, to handle the stress of internship or job searching. So um, too much stress will bring on fatigue and burnout. <clears throat> and when you're stressed, it's important to take the time to renew as best you can through an activity, hobby, exercise. Taking that time out will renew your energy. Um, and then the formula for success, according to Sean Acor, who is a TED talker and who is a psychologist who teaches positive psychology, um, who talks about the connection between happiness and success. So I think this is kind of a little thing, but it's an important thing to just to just kind of reflect on. And he says that most people believe that the, the formula for success is that how hard you work directly affects how successful you become. How successful you become defines how happy you will be. And once you reach your personally defined goal of success, you re redefine what it means to be successful. But he challenges people to reverse that. Um, and he says that raising your level of positivity in the present releases dopamine. So there's a physiological change in your body just from trying to remain positive. Um, and it turns on different learning centers in your brain, allowing you to adapt your surroundings in different ways. Your intelligence rises, your creativity rises, your energy level rises. And in fact, every business outcome improves. 
And that's not to ignore the fact that there are barriers to remaining positive in the face of, of certain challenges, but that is just what Sean Acor, I'm sorry, I think I said Steve, Sean Acor, positive psychology, um, positive psychologist would say. Um, being mindful of technology's impact on writing skills. So texting, emailing, social media can allow writing and grammar skills to slip. So, um, you know, skillful writing shows attention to detail. And if you have that, if you're writing that you're an excellent communicator or excellent written and verbal communication skills on your resume with several typos, then, you know, that's not a good look. Is there a general number of internships you think someone should try to take on before they graduate? I don't think there's a number to shoot for. I think it kind of depends on your career goals. Um, and so if you had very clearly defined career goals of this is what I want to do, um, you know, it doesn't have to be a lot. Just the fact that you have some internship experience is gonna make you, um, it's gonna be easier for you to get offers after you graduate. So sure, one or two that are you know right in line with what you're trying to accomplish is is good. Um, if you don't have those clearly defined career goals in terms of that occupation or industry that I'm, well, I wouldn't say industry, but occupation that I'm trying to pursue, maybe it is an industry. You know, I generally want to be, you know, I don't know, in tech, in healthcare, whatever it may be, but I don't know that role specifically. Then it's really about career exploration and trying, you know, seeing how you fit in a certain organization exploring different roles within that organization while you're an intern by talking with other people, seeing what other jobs they're doing. Um, but there isn't a magical number. I think it really depends on the individual. Um, so who is hiring? Um, making it, you know, if, if it's relevant to what you're trying to pursue, these are the areas, industries, um, organizations that are uh, hiring more now. So technology, cybersecurity, um, finance being banks, finance and insurance, healthcare, um, you know, nurses, medical techs, safety workers, e-commerce, both products and people, logistics, supply chain management, um, education, um, risk analysis, uh, data analytics, advertising and marketing, um, commu communications and social media, that's the digital literacy part, and then small and mid-sized companies, and that's especially for internships, small and mid-sized companies um, are, are growing in terms of offering internships. So what are some internship resources available to you? Uh, some as a WSU student and some just in general. Um, so I'm gonna take you over to ascc.wsu.edu. Right now, give me a second while I share my screen. Of course, that's not where I wanted to start. I wanted to start there. So this is the main academic advising and career center for the main campus, but there's a lot of great information here for any WSU student at any campus, even a global campus student, even a global campus student who already has years of experience. Um, and so for the internship resources I wanted to show you, this is ascc.wsu.edu. There's the building career skills drop down menu, and you can see the relevant career development areas. Um, but finding jobs internships is where I'm going to start. You can either click visit handshake right here at the top, or you can do find an internship here on the drop down menu to take you to handshake and handshake is the job and internship posting platform for WSU. Um, so anytime I'm working with an employer who, who reaches out to me and says, hey, I have an opportunity for a global campus student, I say, great. Um, let me know, but also put it on Handshake. So this is where we tell all students to go, go to Handshake to see what's there. Um, so this is, I have a little bit of a different view and I can't really access the student view, but just to get an idea, just to do a brief tour here, I'm looking at the, um, the posting section and it says jobs, but there are lots of internships here also. Um, and so I'm just starting out at the base level how many are active in here? There are over 29,000. That's obviously way too many options. Um, and this is a taking into account jobs, internships, volunteer experience, graduate work also. Um, so just know that there are plenty of filtering options <laughs> to, to narrow that down. So I'm gonna go to the filters here. And just to start, I'm gonna look at internships. Um, let's go job type. 
Uh, experiential learning is a term used for internships also. So I'm going to put that in there. So experiential learning and internship. I think they did that to replace externship, which is a term that people who have to take externships know what it is and I can never remember. Um, okay, so let me apply these filters. And so what have we gone from 29,000 plus to, sorry, my, my bar's in the middle there, 8,400. Okay, and again, this, so Handshake is a national platform used uh, by universities across the nation. So, you know, being that you, we are global campus students, you know, you don't necessarily have to be in Eastern Washington. You don't necessarily have to be in Western Washington. There are going to be probably more of those postings in there, but if you are somewhere else across the nation, um, there could be something in here for you. So we're at 8,000. Uh, I'm going to continue filtering. And I will go, you could do paid and unpaid, um, start dates, salary ranges are gonna be for, for job posting. So job roles, you could see, I'll probably just go locations more, but you can see some of the specific job roles here, just job titles. Um, job function is gonna give you things like, oops, sorry, no, I just did accounting, but you can see different job functions some more broader clusters of job roles and the responsibilities. I'm gonna take counting off. Um, employment type is not gonna be irrelevant for internships, but just so you see it. Full-time, part-time, job labels. Just job, to job labels. Oh, include whether or not they're um, coming to one of the campuses to present or interact with students or present virtually, which they do also. Um, and then industry, if you know industry you're looking for. I did accounting again, because I was impatient and it's the first one alphabetically. Um, and then, you know, all these different filters you can look at, employer tags. One thing I would say is nice here, posted to all majors um, or looking for specific majors. Um, so I'm just gonna do, I'm based out of Seattle. Um, so I'm just curious for location. What do we have? West side, location, not tight, but Seattle. Oh, that was right. Autofill, apply. And um, it's, I'm running a little slowly here. So we've gone from our 8,400 to, again, my bar's in the way, 237, much more manageable. Um, what I was going to say is that these internships will continue to populate more as we get closer to the next uh, career fair, career expo is the term that WSU uses. So there will, you know, the last last handful of career fairs, we, there's been a virtual career fair uh, component that's usually done uh, the Monday, the day before the in-person one. And there are, there have been, you know, I think 80 employers at the last virtual one. And they are most of them hiring for internships. So um, they are internships and jobs, but a lot of them are hiring for internships. So be sure to really check out Handshake regularly as it gets closer to those times. So for the fall, the, the biggest recruiting fair is in early October. So in September, you'll start to see a lot of those um, internship and job postings populate. And then for the spring, it'll be in early February. So in January, just be sure to check in regularly if you're thinking about pursuing an internship to see what's populating. So yeah, that's Handshake. That's kind of just to give you an idea of what it is, how big it is, how you can you know boil it down a little bit more um, and use it for you as a WSU student. Um, with another one that I wanted to highlight, so I'm gonna jump out of Handshake here and heading back to uh, ASCC.wcu.edu main page, finding a job internship. I'll go ahead and just click on find an internship. Um, there will be, for any of these areas you, you navigate to, there will be articles about whatever that topic is. So resume articles for the resume section. Um, so there's one here for Handshake, um, finding a business internship, three tips for building a reference list, et cetera, et cetera. Some of these are third party articles and some of them are actually written by WSU career um, development professionals, just so you know.
but you'll see the resources here at the bottom that you can check out. I just wanted to highlight Parker Dewey, this first one here. Um, and this is where I was saying that this is kind of a gig economy-esque resource. So if you were to click here um, on the Parker Dewey page, there'd be a little more information about it. Um, but it's a micro internship program that is not as um, not as not as lengthy in time, not as much of a commitment as a traditional summer internship. Let's say um, it might be a week, it might be two weeks, whatever it may be. It's a shorter term internship. A lot of different companies. So be sure to go ahead and look at it to see if there's something there that's relevant to what you're you're trying to accomplish. They are paid short-term assignments um, that they do year round. So it's not just on a regular recruiting basis, uh, recruiting cycle that a company might have. Um, so this is a really nice thing, like they say here, uh, good resources to develop your career skills, work with diverse companies and people to help leverage yourself to get hired, evaluate companies, ensure a mutual fit for both of you and to support academic outcomes. Um, so these are the ones through WSU. I also just wanted to highlight one um, that we have highlighted before with WSU, um, but it's not currently on there. And it's something called Forage. And this is an international um, work simulation program uh, that is very much akin to an internship. So for people who are have a very limited schedule for internships, these are things that you can um, complete more on your own time. Uh, and so as you'll see here, the idea with Forage is to tell them about yourself and your career goals. You enroll in a job simulation to complete tasks that replicate real work. You compare your work with what they say is what they're kind of looking for, what a company is looking for, um, and earn a certificate. So there's some resume material there, and you can access curated resources and a chance to connect with recruiters by going through different programs on Forage. So this is a nice simulation internship program platform um, that's virtual that um, you might want to check out also. And then lastly, not something I need to, to jump to, but LinkedIn is still a great resource for finding internships um, externally, you know, outside of the, the Handshake platform. Just check the chat box there. It's a semester when uh, typically most internships are open. Typically, the fall recruiting uh, cycle is the one where they have a lot of internships that they're hiring for for the upcoming summer. So in September, they'll start posting most of them. Not to say that there won't be any in, in January, but there there will be plenty. But the most common time is that September timeline for an internship to start the following summer. Um, that's a good question. All right. Jumping back over. I think I hit all those resources I wanted to share. And shake Parker Dewey Forge and LinkedIn. Yep. And I believe that brings me to, I believe, the end. Yes. Excellent. Again, <laughs> thank you so much for um, inviting me to join to talk about internships. Um, I appreciate the opportunity, and I'm here to help um, Global Campus students with their career development questions. So again, if you do have any, let me know. Send me an email. That's the best way to get in contact with me. Um, there's the career support website listed there also, excuse me, on the main website just to kind of get the process started. And then the WSU Career Guide blog is also on the main website, and I try to post um, Opportunities for global campus students there for virtual opportunities. So virtual career fairs, virtual education fairs, virtual employer information sessions, things of that nature. So networking opportunities, internship opportunities, all that fun stuff. So again, thank you so much. I'll hang out for questions um, and I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Chris. We appreciate it. Well, I do have a question actually. So I've noticed that sometimes when I'm applying to internships, it can be really hard. I, I get ghosted by companies. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you have any advice on that. Like, do you think that like there's a higher chance if you keep emailing them? Cause I have seen like success with that. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes bugging, bugging certain <laughs> companies, like uh -huh. <laughs> when they ghost you, cause they do ghost you. Yeah. 
Uh, no, it's a, it's important to advocate for yourself for sure, just as it would be for for a job search also. Um, but there's definitely that fine line um, where you know you want to be sure. I, you know, a good a good strategy that people do is sometimes on their cover letter, they'll say, and if you have the opportunity to produce a cover letter for an internship, you know that 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 outro paragraph that says thank you so much for taking the time. It's so, uh, an opportunity I'm really interested re interested in. I will follow up with you at this time to see, you know, what the progress is of this internship uh, posting uh, or vacancy. So that's one thing where you can at least let them know ahead of time, even if they don't notice it. It's something that you can say, you know, I did this, I put it on the cover letter, and I'm going to follow up at that time. And then, you know, at that time you follow up and you say, depending on what they say, maybe it's, you know, Thank you. Maybe it's I'll follow up again in one or two weeks. But yeah, the point of definitely advocating yourself for yourself is a great point to make. Um, but yeah, that ghosting definitely happens if they filled the role and you know the the time it takes for them to tell all the applicants that the role's filled or they haven't made a decision yet, they might just not be investing their time in that. That's a great question. Thank you so much. I do not see any questions. Um, I didn't have a question. I actually had mm -hmm. a comment to make. I was told yesterday by Andrea Donenworth, the person who was in charge of student government and also in charge of the student ambassador program, that it, the student ambassador roles as well as student government roles can fulfill your internship requirement if you have an internship requirement for a class like uh i forget specific numbers i know com has one probably so i don't know if all the majors have one but if you yes if you do want to work here at wazoo global campus it's great i will tell you firsthand you can apply to be a student ambassador have that as your internship requirement it's great i would recommend yeah that's awesome uh and i see amaris put some of those um those course numbers there in the chat box too um so yeah that's that's great news and working with your advisor to get registered for those for the ones um where it's required or not because some some like you said some do have that requirement and some do not but if it fits in your plan, then why not? That's great. I was muted the whole time. I was like, um, that would be off. Awesome. So if you all like more events like this, like hosted by the First Generation Club, we would love for you to attend. Uh, we're having, uh, do you want to say, Adrian, in December, hosting the Lo-Fi event? Do you want uh, to? Oh, yes. In December, more First Generation events that we're hosting. We are hosting a holiday jazz study night. So you're free to come listen to some holiday jazz study because it's going to be the week before finals, it is December 7th at 5 p.m. Pacific time. If you don't have any finals to study for, you know, come join us for some holiday jazz. Uh, talk in the chat with your fellow Cougs about any classes or anything in particular. Talk about what you're going to do for the holidays. What you're going to do once the semester is over and you can finally relax. Um, and the first five students who sign up will receive hot chocolate packets in the mail. So definitely get on it. Um, also, the First Generation Club will be holding an open meeting on Friday, December 1st, which is this Friday. Uh, I don't remember what time that is. Fatima, do you remember what time that is? I think it's... Uh, let me check presence form i can look it up uh it is at 3 p.m there is no registration required it is on our presence page yes uh thank you erin uh you 
don't have to register. We have the Zoom link on the presence page, so you can just hop right in when it's three o'clock. You'll be all set. Come chat with us if you have any ideas for future events or anything you'd like to see from us. Please let us know, or even if you'd like to pop in and say hi, we will very much appreciate it. Sounds good. Thank you so much for making this happen, Chris. And we're excited and hopefully we get more workshops. I know I would want to cover letter workshops, definitely. Sounds good. Thank you so much for and inviting me. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. And I think we're done. Good night. Thank you, everybody, for coming.